being the villains of the story. Let's watch how these six police officers disgraced their badges. Number six, Daniel Holtzclaw. Daniel Holtzclaw, an ex-Oklahoma City officer convicted of rape and other charges after he preyed on African-American women over six months, was sentenced to 263 years in prison, as recommended by the jury, according to his attorney. The sentence comes just over a month after a sobbing Holtzclaw was convicted on 18 of 36 counts, including four counts of first-degree rape and four counts of forced oral sodomy. Prosecutors said Holtzclaw selected victims in one of Oklahoma City's poorest neighborhoods based on their criminal histories, assuming their drug or prostitution records would undermine any claims they might make against him. Then, he would subject them to assaults that escalated from groping to oral sodomy and rape, according to the testimony of 13 victims. Holtzclaw, whose father is a police lieutenant on another force, waived his right to testify. Two of those women shared their stories with media, recounting horrific memories of being forced to perform different acts by a serial rapist with a badge who was supposed to protect and serve. Attorney Benjamin Crump, who represented the families of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, has criticized the media, asking, where is the national outcry for their justice? Crump praised the sentence Thursday, saying it was a landmark victory. The defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and set punishment at eight years. Procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 20 years. Forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. <laughs> Mr. Holtzclaw, this jury finds you guilty of the various counts. You will be remanded to the custody of the Oklahoma County Sheriff. Number five, Brandon Boone. A former Winter Haven police officer appeared in a Bartow courtroom as a defendant. Brandon Boone was charged with battery after an incident in a Polk County jail. Security video from inside the jail shows Boone strike a handcuffed inmate with his knee before taking him into a darkened room. The inmate, Ronald Augustin, claims Boone and other officers beat him and broke his leg. Boone strongly denies he did anything wrong. At a status hearing on the case, Boone's attorney advised the judge he has been unable to reach an agreeable resolution to the case with state attorneys. Your Honor, we've been trying to resolve this with the state. It seems we are not going to resolve it. It's going to be a trial case, said attorney Walt Otto. Otto advised the judge there will be a large number of witnesses and he has not had a chance to interview them all. A trial date in the case has not yet been set. Number four, Michael Dotro. Former Edison police officer Michael Dotro scratched his neck and forehead but expressed no remorse before being sentenced to 20 years in state prison for setting fire to the home of a superior officer while the police captain and his family were inside asleep. He offered no apology to the family of Captain Mark Anderco, who had to flee the burning house, no remorse for the witness he tampered with, and no remorse for the other officers who lost their jobs because of their involvement with him. Dotro, who must serve 17 years before he becomes eligible for parole, said nothing in the courtroom during the nearly hour-long sentencing before Superior Court Judge Pedro Jimenez Jr. as Middlesex County Prosecutor Andrew Carey, Edison Police Chief Thomas Bryan, Anderco and his wife looked on. The sentence, negotiated under a plea agreement with Assistant Prosecutor Russell Curley, relates to crimes Dotro committed over a period of five years. Let's watch. Yes, he's caused very specific damage to Captain and Dirk and his family, but what he's really done and what we're going to be left with after he's walking out the door is allow people a basis to say that our system of justice has no integrity. Number three, Michael Sippel. A former Rochester police officer convicted of assaulting a city man during an arrest will not serve any time in the Monroe County Jail, but instead was sentenced to three years of probation. City Court Judge Thomas Rainbow Morse sentenced Michael Sippel for the assault of Christopher Pate. Morse in May convicted Sippel of third-degree assault, a misdemeanor. Sippel punched Christopher Pate in the face during a May 2018 arrest. Sippel and his partner had wrongly identified Pate as a burglary suspect. Pate suffered a facial fracture. Sippel contended that Pate initiated a physical confrontation and resisted arrest. Moore spoke for nearly 90 minutes before imposing the sentence, explaining in detail why he concluded that Sippel's use of physical force was excessive. You should have restrained yourself that day, Morse told Sippel. But the judge also spoke at length about the impact of post-traumatic stress and how it clouded the actions of both Mr. Pate and Officer Sippel 
on the day of their confrontation. Let's watch. The moment you took that yellow taser out of its holster, you were way beyond in the court's view. I'm placing you on probation for a period of three years. Number two, William Demby Jr. The uncle of a woman murdered by her husband yelled abuse at the killer as he was sentenced to life in an Ohio prison. William Demby Jr. was found guilty of stabbing Holly, 33, to death and pushing her out of a window at their home in August 2011. As the 45-year-old was sentenced, one of Holly's relatives had to be restrained and removed from the courtroom after screaming at Demby. You cut her throat twice. You stabbed her eight times, you cold-blooded killer. I've had enough. Leslie Gregg screamed as family and court officials restrained him. His comments came as Demby accused his mother-in-law, Cheryl Folds, of failing to care for his and Holly's seven-year-old son properly. The former corrections officer had been found guilty earlier of murder, felonious assault, and domestic violence after killing Holly at their Grafton Township home. The couple had argued on August 11, and Demby had chased his wife upstairs with a combat knife. As she tried to escape, he pulled her shirt and then her pants off after breaking into the second floor bathroom where she was trying to escape out of the window and he stabbed her and let her fall. Let's watch the show.